Retro Gamers, Antar Pereira from RetroGamesCollector.com and I think you can guess what this video is going to be. Not if you hadn't figured that out by the title anyway. Um, I'm going to be unboxing the ZX Spectrum next which has finally come. Now I, it's gone on so long since the Kickstarter that I'd actually lost a little bit of interest in the ZX Spectrum next to be honest and I was half I was debating whether to even keep the thing when it came or whether just to to sell it on um, but now it's come um, I'm feeling a little bit more excited about it now so uh, the rest of the video will be me unboxing it enjoy okay so uh, this is the ZX Spectrum next box um, it came in a, uh, a double wall mailer box um, this one um, which was just a tiny bit bigger than the actual ZX Spectrum next box itself so um, it couldn't wobble around much but I was a bit concerned that the box was a bit deeper than this box um, it didn't really matter lateral movement but up and down movement would allow the lid to lift and then obviously the contents can move around inside which uh, is not good but uh, there wasn't a lot of extra space in the box um, and in this instance I don't think any arms done because it all feels well, there's nothing rattling around anyway put it that way now anyway here's the box it's matte uh, except for the actual picture of the next itself which is spot varnished and Sinclair logo at the bottom there spot varnished as you can see they shine um, the box itself feels like lovely quality um, I'll just show you all the way around the outside of it and the underneath now the underneath is um, also spot varnish where the screenshots are. Uh, screenshots of games like Dreamworld Pogi, uh, Lords of Midnight, there was a special, a special editions of these games all made for the next. Um, it's got some spiel about the actual machine itself and what they were trying to achieve and it has got the hardware specs here. Uh, all very nice. Um, like I say it feels like a premium product because the box is such a such good quality. I used to work in print and um, <clears throat> I worked in print for 16 years or more uh, so I know a little bit about um, print quality and uh, I can tell you now that this box is uh, very nice very nice indeed. So let's have a look inside. Ah, underneath the lid you've got uh, a piece of foam to protect the inside, protect the uh, spec Spectrum next underneath, I'll get my words out in a minute. I'm going to pop that to one side for now. And here it is. Now this is the first time I've ever seen a ZX Spectrum next in the flesh, believe it or not. I've been to tons of events um, where they have had a stall there um, and I've never actually made it to the stall yet because usually I am working on my own stall so I don't get a chance to get to um, play with the uh, with the other stuff very very often. So um, so yeah, this is the first time I've seen it in the flesh, and uh, first impressions it looks nice. Let's have a feel of it. And this is a genuine unboxing. I haven't actually opened this yet, so this is the first time I've looked at it. Um, well, first impressions are it's got a good weight to it. It feels good quality. It's solid, really solid. Um, yeah, lovely, really nice, really nice machine. A worthy successor to uh, the Spectrum lineage, I think. Um, the keys themselves, yeah, they're nice. Uh, dare I say they feel a bit like an Apple keyboard, that sort of travel, that amount of travel. Um, really nice quality yeah and all that sort of to and fro in with um, with the keys for quality control has paid off because they're uh, well absolutely flawless they look lovely 
So the keys are matte in the centre where you put your fingers and around the outside they are shiny. I was a little worried about having shiny keys because obviously things that are shiny don't stay shiny for long. Um, but I don't think, to be honest, the matte areas are so big on there you're not going to be touching the shiny areas so it's not going to look grubby. I think you could keep that looking quite nice, quite easily. Um, so the actual machine's got like a nice matte finish to it. Um, the Sinclair logo in the corner there, which is the rounded off Sinclair logo that they're using now, um, is shiny. ZX Spectrum next underneath is in red. Um, on the original Spectrum it was obviously in white. Um, on the Spectrum Plus 128 it was in red. So uh, they've kept up the Spectrum 128. Uh, actually, it's mixed, mix really, because the, the Sinclair would have been in red as well on the on the uh, plus one to eight. But uh, on this in this instance, just the Net ZX Spectrum next is in red. So that's the front of it. Feels feels really nice. And here we have all the ports on the back there. Um, right, what have we got? We've got the power in. We've got a digital video debug blanked off. We've got two USB B ports blanked off there. We've got a digital, um, well, HDMI port there, and digital video it says. Um, ear and mic, audio out, RGB, VGA, um, and a keyboard and mouse uh, port. Okay, so on this side we've got a reset button drive button, the SD card slot, which has got yeah, just, a, just a blanking thing in it at the moment, I think, yeah. and an NMI, port, NMI um, button. On the front we have got two joystick ports, and on this side we have got the non lighty up um, colours, which I dare say somebody will come up with a mod to uh, make those light up very shortly. <laughs> if they haven't already. On the underside, um, excuse my grubby finger marks. See, I've got it out of the box for two seconds, it's grubby already. Um, we've got four rubber feet in the corners there. Um, I'll just test that out on the table. Oh, crikey, solid. Yeah, that ain't going to move around with those. Um, also, got two little feet that pop out. Now, they do feel a little bit flimsy. I can see I can see those becoming casualties after a very short amount of time. Luckily, I never use the feet on my ZX Spectrum Plus or my Plus One Two Eight, so I'm hardly likely to use the feet on this. I'm not I'm not keen on having it at an angle anyway, so uh, it's not really a problem for me. Um, lovely, really nice feeling thing. Um, quality, like I say, it's the first time I've ever handled one, so and I'm very pleased with that. It's lovely. Right back to the box. Uh, inside the box we have got another box and we've got the manual which is quite exciting. Um, the inside of the box is made of um, made of just folded cardboard by the looks of it. But saying that it's all very very solid and uh, you know the stuff's not going anywhere. So let's have a look. I think I'm going to need to get that out to get to the manual. Right, the manual itself is uh, in keeping with all the other uh, Sinclair manuals so far. Well, actually, no, not all of them, just the first two. Um, and not even the first two, I'll get it right in a minute, because the ZX81 didn't, uh, wasn't like this either. Uh, like the ZX81 and the Spectrum manuals. Okay, right, I've got it right now. Uh, in the sense that it is um, wire spiral bound on the uh, on the spine, and it has got a sci-fi image on there, um, very reminiscent of uh, of Harris himself, who did the original ZX Spectrum manual, which is here. Um, so you've got sci-fi pictures on the front, similar sort of lettering, um, and spiral found on the spine. Um, 
As you can see, the Spectrum Next manual is slightly bigger in both dimensions. Inside, see how it compares to the original Spectrum. <laughs> As you can see, there are comparisons to be made there. Um, contents page. Is there a contents page? No, in this one we've got a dedication to Rick Dickinson. And a forward. And then straight on to the uh, chapters in this instance. So uh, no contents in the front of the, uh, the book. So I think that's where the comparisons end. Um, yeah, lovely. I'm really pleased with that. That's a lovely feeling manual. Feels like the original. Um, like the original Spectrum one. And uh, I shall have immense fun working my way through that just as I did through the uh, original Spectrum manual when I was a kid and I'm a big kid now so I'll enjoy working through this one in fact I'm going to get my own kids to learn a bit of basic on the uh, spec next uh, probably using that manual as a basis so I'm assuming this box here contains the PSU and it does and also a whole load of different adapters uh, obviously we only need the three pin adapter in the UK so here's the PSU and uh, yeah it just plugs in to the uh, 9 volt port on the back there uh, there is no on off switch on the Spectrum next, which um, I always thought was a bit of an omission. Um, we always needed one on the original Spectrum. The amount of uh, power sockets that ended up being faulty because you kept having to unplug this in and out every five minutes because of crashes and God knows what. Um, you know, you'd have expected somebody somewhere to have thought oh we'll put a power button on the spectrum next but no which is a bit disappointing I'll probably put an inline power switch on there so I don't have to keep going down to the socket to turn it on and off all the time because sometimes the sockets are in places where you can't get to um, and this is the thing you know you've got a power power supply plugged into a socket that's behind a chair or something um, you know it ain't easy just to keep going down and unplugging the thing so you know an on off switch would have been a nice thing to have. I know these have got reset buttons on now as the original Spectrum didn't but uh, nevertheless um, if I want to unplug the thing or turn it off at the socket uh, or just turn it off uh, I can't I have to do it at the socket don't I so uh, it's not it's not ideal. Um, but only a minor gripe um, the actual machine itself feels and looks lovely. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, showing you in another video um, just um, what I think of it in action. So um, until then, thanks very much for watching this unboxing video. And uh, I'll see you all again soon, so folks, bye.